You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. With us is actually a very special guest, a guy we have a lot of respect for. This man has worked with everyone from Zemeckis to Francis Ford Coppola. He's a veteran. He works with people with PTSD. He's doing a play. Really show up when you got something going on around here, would you? Uh, but uh, Tucker Smallwood, our good buddy. How are you, Tucker? Uh, I am I'm slowly catching up. I think I need a couple more shots. Uh, espresso type. But uh, <laughs> right. I, I, I was I was heartened by... Um, the fact that uh, you were able to say, we have our shit together. I was just stunned. I said, my gosh, you can say that on radio? It's a whole new era it's, of radio. Why have we grown up? You know, unfortunately, we try very hard. I try very hard. My nine-year-old w- works on it with me to t- watch my language. I'm trying to, but you know, it is what it is. And this show is just an insight into real life. We don't really stage much for it, unfortunately. But you're right. We we do say that. We probably shouldn't, but here we are. And, it's it's still shocking. And now to me, we I'll watch it too. I'll watch a TV show like Justified, and they say everything on the show. And I I didn't uh, know that you could do it. The boundaries between. I guess television and cable are completely dissolved. Now yeah. it's whatever, you know, just you have to be a better parent in terms of observation and surveillance than you ever were because it's all getting to your kid. It's probably maybe down to three, George Carlin. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, good so, reference, Tucker, yeah. what's shaking with you, man? You're doing a play and... Well, we opened on the 26th of May. It's a play called Where the Great Ones Run, written by Mark Roberts, who created the TV series Mike and Molly. It's a story from his... Um, early days uh, growing up in the Midwest, and uh, it harkens back to a different time, but it's a story of a country singing legend who comes home after a a number of years of absence to his daughter and his estranged wife, and hilarity ensues, as does heartache and uh, a number of other curious things. That sounds like a country music song in itself. (laughs) That storyline sounds like a something Willie Nelson would be singing about. Ethan, you actually bring up a, an amazing point because I, I saw the film, uh, saw the film, saw the play on opening night, and I've read some of the reviews. And one of the interesting things is the approach to it really is musical. It kind of defies a lot of the expectations you have about traditional structure and and traditional stage devices almost, and it's it's musical in nature. We need to give away a couple tickets to our audience. We need to get our, our we need to embrace this kind of thing. I, I th- embrace the hell out of it. But we only have uh, three shows a week: Friday and Saturday nights at eight, and Sunday matinees at three. It's a it's a heck of a lot of fun. Where's it running? It's running at the uh, at Theater Theater, just w- just west of uh, La Brea on Pico. Uh, the uh, company which I am a part is called Rogue Machine. We've won just about everything in sight. This is the beginning of our fifth season. We've won the best play for the last two years. Now, I grew nice. up on Pico, and um, right there... Where Where's you, my that's, volume? That, that's, Ros- that's where Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles Absolutely. is. It's a little bit west of there and just across from Okie Dogs. Okie's oh, yeah. Dog. And you know, one of the one of the things uh, when people think of stage, I don't think, you know, unless they're thinking big Broadway like Disney productions, they don't think in terms of the visual spectacle that's possible on stage and I gotta tell you this show the set and I don't want to give anything away but what they do visually in this is worth the price of admission alone nice. it takes place in a truck stop diner and it stars Jeff Cobra who some of you may remember as Dodger from China Beach nice well we all like our truck stop diners at least I do Hey, I got a quick question for you before we uh I like get the truck stop play. bathrooms even more. <laughs> yeah, bagel, you know, do you know where the exit is? Sorry. Uh, do, uh, <laughs> you, you might you might you might want to wait 5 minutes. <laughs> um there's a rumor going around that the Albert Hall character in Apocalypse Now is based on you. Oh, that's that's a that's a that's a false rumor. Uh Albert's character chief is uh is a navy man. Yeah. Uh the only truth to anything is that I did speak with Francis um before the filming of that back in the mid 70s and um the sequence of water skiing was i'm i i've suggested to francis um partly because i mentioned i was the only man in uh three quarter water ski in the combat zone in the year 69 yeah. uh, it was great fun it was got shot at pretty much every time but my teacher at that time was stella adler and uh she knew much more about me than i did and she said you you cannot do this film you're not ready to work like that uh, so it took me five more years to uh, to get together with him on the Cotton Club when Adler I, Cotton Club we'll get to that in a minute but when Adler told you that did she know because of the environment Coppola typically works in or because no, of your no she knew ca- me psychologically from the Vietnam yes your I, time in Vietnam I, you came, ready to... I came back from Vietnam I spent months in the hospital 
I resigned my commission and moved to New York to study acting. Yeah. And uh, Sanford Meisner, with whom I first worked at the Neighborhood Playhouse and later with Stella, were both very patient and very supportive of me. They knew I was traumatized, and um, but they, they, they both cared for me. Mm-hmm. I've never actually asked you this, Tuck, but when you when you learned about uh, the process that they went through in making Apocalypse Now, you know, you see things like Hearts of Darkness and how long they were in the jungle and immersing. Do do are you do you say thank goodness I didn't do it, or does part of you wish, oh, I would have liked to have been a part of that adventure? I would have liked to have been capable of being a part of that adventure. I see. That's mm-hmm. the reality. No, I, I wasn't wrapped all that tight at that time. And uh, I was lately, I was later to become rather unwrapped in the early 80s and spiraled for about eight years in depression. But um, it, it was an exciting piece of work. I think it's one of the seminal films about Vietnam, and Francis had the genius to capture the surrealness of Vietnam. It was a movie war. Uh, I could be in the midst of death and rot and stench and two hours later sit on the patio and watch the sunset in Chai Gon and drinking mm-hmm. a cognac. Yeah. That's pretty surreal. You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. 